Brooklyn Independent Television. In the Zone is made possible with generous underwriting support from the Brooklyn Cyclones. Tickets are on sale now. For information, 718-449-8497 or on the web at www.brooklyncyclones.com. The Cyclones are Brooklyn. This week on In the Zone, we're outside of Abraham Lincoln High School, home of the Rail Splitters, where I sat down with my special guest, Nyan Botang, where he relived several of his championship moments when he played alongside Sebastian Telfair and Antonio Pena. We also discussed what really happened at the University of Florida. And as far as his next move, well, that's up to Nyan Botang. And we will go inside the box for the Junior Bronze Squash Tournament at Poly Prep with Alexandra Coppage. All of that and more on In The Zone. Hey, we are here at Lincoln High School, the home of this year's PSAL football champs. And uh, joining me is a young man I had the pleasure of uh, meeting back in maybe 0203 when I first started my job here. And back then we were sports talk and we were a weekly sports show. We <laughs> talked about various issues and from PSAL football or high school, fo uh, college football, college basketball, a little bit of everything. But this young man played with Lincoln and he was on the basketball team in 02 to 05. And also he was on the football team, became an All American and went on to University of Florida. I'd like to, Diane Botang, thanks. <laughs> Thank, thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, man, it's been a quite a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been a long time since I've been back. Uh, I love being back to this place, you know. Man, I feel like I've been all over the world, but I still find myself here, you know, which is a good thing. When when you think about the course of your high school career, what what goes what? Just just on any particular moment, any particular game, basketball, football. I mean, I think my whole high school experience was one of the best times of my life. Uh, it was really like a turning point of my life because I knew that if I put in work, you know, everything that I dream of would come to pass. And uh, we had all the resources here as far as the academics, you know, from the teachers, from the staff, Ms. Ebed, uh, the athletic, you know, uh, athletic department. Uh, just the way the whole thing as a whole was perfect for, you know, any athlete to excel here. And you had a program here. And, and during that year, 02, 03, 04, 04, you won the PSAL City Championship? Yes, we won the City Championship. You know, we had a tradition. Yeah. You know, we was a powerhouse and, you know. And you were a national powerhouse. A national powerhouse. You guys used to travel around the country. Yeah, I mean, we had the privilege, you know, with, um, you know, pl players like myself, players like Sebastian Telfair, Antonio Penner, you know, Karan Clark. I mean, the list go on and on. You know, we had um, national recognition, so we had the opportunity to also play other competitions, which we feel other people that we were growing up with didn't have the opportunity to do, such as like schools like Grady, you know, our tribals, those guys, well, they didn't have the opportunity to go, you know, across the nation to compete. So whenever we came, we were very confident. And, and, uh, and by the time you traveled, you were ready for the regular season. Oh yeah, I mean, and ready for the playoffs. I mean, we were so good that we, we didn't we barely practiced before the like the, during the playoff time we don't practice. You know, we just rest. You know, we have meetings and we go home. I mean, that's how talented we were. Um, you know, we we all were like you know individuals who wanted to get how to go and wanted to go somewhere and we accomplished it. And and during that year, the year you graduated with the year before, uh, Sebastian yes. was pro, and he I believe he was the first NBA ball player. In New York City, in New York City, to go from high school, to go from high school to the pros. Yeah, I mean that's that's Sebastian. I mean his talent, you know, is unquestionable. The guy is one of the best point guards I ever played with. Um, one of the best passes I ever seen. Uh, a great person, you know, a good father now. Um, he was a great teammate. He always pushed me. Um, I mean, we, me and him was like brothers. You know, we were very. I, I was very competitive. You know, he was very competitive. You know, we were very two emotional guys, and you know, we always like we went at it, man. You know, I practiced, but in the game time, we knew what time it was, and he knew where I was gonna be. It was just a, it was just a blessing. As far as Antonio Pena, man, Antonio Pena is a great, great guy. You know, he was the big guy, um, very skillful, big man. Um, we were very privileged to have him. I mean, he bailed us out so many times, even in the state championship, the one we our first state championship. 
and played you, Mount Vernon, right? And my, yeah, he, yeah, against Mount Vernon. You know, he was a young guy, but he really he toughened it out, and he, you know, we, we came out we came out victorious because of Antonio. And uh, I mean, he was a great teammate, a competitor, a great friend. I'm, actually, I went to elementary school with him, so I mean, we always had that chemistry. You guys are basically during that time were like rock stars. I mean, you really were the trial. I mean, the media, the, the cameras followed you guys everywhere you were. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, and this is really predates. I mean, the, the internet was there, and Facebook wasn't even around. Then. Man, so, I mean, I'm, I'm now I look at the media. You know, the social media, as far as relating to sports, it's just like I get, I'm, I'm jealous. But I feel like our time, we still had the opportunity. You know, we was able to attract a lot of media, you know, national media, you know, local media. And, um, you know, we everybody knew we were. You know, we was always on television, on ESPN, and, um, you know, which was really boost our confidence as individuals and as a team and as a high school, as a high school student. Football. Let's talk about that. Growing up in Coney Island, um, I had friends that always played football and basketball. And, um, you know, I, I came, I didn't, I wasn't born here. I wasn't born here. I was born in Ghana. So when we came here, I was a very young guy. And I didn't know much about the sports, but I knew a little bit about basketball. And uh, there was a coach called um, Ruben Sanchez from Fort Hamilton High School. He was the guy that taught me everything that I know. I mean, he took me under his wings. I was, about, I think, 12 years old, uh, playing Pop Warner football. Uh, show me that experience, and I was real good. And uh, you know, I began to maximize my talent, and um, I got an opportunity to go to Poly Prep. Um, but uh, I had a dream that I, want, I always wanted to play with my older brother Dominic Osei. Mm -hmm. He went here as well. He went to Fordham. He went to University of Flo uh, Fordham, mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, I, I wanted to play with him, so I turned down the football scholarship to go to that high school, and I came here. So when I came here, my mind was solely on basketball. I said I was not going to play football. So my first year, I remember Lincoln had a, their team wasn't, was, was not good at all. I think there was like 0-9. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I didn't want to, I'm known for winning, you know. I didn't want to be part of so that. So you part of a losing position. Yeah, program. so, okay. you know, Coach Sanchez came to the school after my freshman year and he, you know, he pleaded with Coach O'Connor to beg me to come down. And um, through some friends, um, Anthony Robbins, who was a uh, D tackle at the time here, he influenced me to come down. I remember I came down there, the guys didn't like me much because at the time there was a big commotion between a football team and a basketball team at the school. Uh -huh. You know, because of the privileges the basketball team was getting. Now, by the time you started playing football, did you sort of bring the teams together because yes. you were playing? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the great things that I was happy with. I was able to bring the basketball team because there was so much attention between the basketball department. I'm not talking about in terms of the coaches, I'm talking about in terms of the players and the, and the students. You know, because they felt that they were, we were more privileged than they were. We was getting more things than they were. So it was kind of like a contention. But but when you're winning, but that's what happens. That's what happens. But when we when I came, when I started playing football, and I was actually one of the marquee players, you know, then Tiny started coming to the football games. I mean, my teammates started coming to the football games. Guys started to know guys, their names. In the lunchroom, we started all talking because I'm talking to everybody. And uh, after a while, you know, the thing like kind of died down. And we all came together as so a team. You were, so you were able basically to bring them together by just playing. By just playing, yes. And um, and I was very, you know, you know, I have a loud presence. You know, I'm a leader, so I'm, all, you know, I'm, I'm always gonna talk. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I, so I always talk to the guys. You know, trying to influence them. And um, you know, just you know, basically they didn't know us, so you know they had the opportunity to get to know me, and they started falling in love with me, and they fell in love with everything that came with me. So I think that was the, the best now, thing about it. Let's also go over, I mean, the sophomore year, your junior year, when you were playing basketball your junior year. Let's go over that year. I mean, that was... That was and also, that was the year that Sebastian yeah. was headed to the pros. That was I mean, really my, a crazy, fun atmosphere. I mean, my, my junior year was very exciting because we had a lot of, you know, Sebastian was getting ready to go to college. He was highly recruited. You and know, said Kentucky was after him, Louisville was Louisville, after him, everyone was after everyone. him. Everyone, so we had everybody at our practices which was also a good opportunity for other guys to show off their talents. Um, we come back, we are going to continue the second part of my conversation with Diane Botang right after this. The Junior Bronze Squash Tournament was held recently at Poly Prep. Alexander Kopich has more on that inside the box.
a racket, ball, and good hand-eye coordination? No, I'm not describing tennis. Brooklyn, let's get ready to play. Squash. Kids of all ages competed in the Poly Prep Junior Bronze Squash Tournament as a way to be physically active and make new friends. Well, I always practice at home and I love squash and I decided that I would try it because it's a great way to meet new people and just play matches. I like how squash gives you a lot of exercise and there's not many people who play squash so it's really easy to get ranked and it's a good way to have some fun and spend your time. While squash involves the use of a racket and a ball, squash is distinctly different from its more popular sister sport, tennis. I like uh, how, like the competitiveness and how it's way different than tennis. What makes it different than tennis? Um, it's, you, it's against a wall and you have to serve in a box and uh, you don't have to get over in it. Parents were on hand to watch their kids play in the tournament as they recognized the value of the sport and athletic competition. It's a great individualized sport and it's great exercise, it's great focus for the kids. And it's also really a great sport now for schools so kids can play through high school and then get into college with it and get scholarships so it's a great sport to do. Prep Country Day School, recognized for developing standout high school squash players, hosted the Junior Bronze Tournament. Next time you reach for your racket, stay indoors and opt for a game of squash. Welcome back, in case you're just joining me, I'm here at Abraham Lincoln High School, home of the PSAL football champions, and uh, they won the title, and of course, later this year, they will be defending their title. But joining me is Nyan Botang, who was an All-American in high school during uh, 205, and also went to the University of Florida, also University of California, and he'll probably get another look in the NFL later on uh, this summer. But we were talking about his high school years here at Abraham Lincoln High School. Now your sophomore year, you said you were recruited by West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Also, and also your junior year, everyone really started to step up. Now being recruited, in terms of that, what was that like? At the same time, Sebastian Telfair was also being recruited, but also there was talk of the NBA. Yes. Um, I mean, I mean, it was, I mean, it wasn't a competition, I mean, I mean, I got my first offer, scholarship offer, my sophomore year. Um, I remember after practice, after the third game or something like that, I got the letter from Coach Rodriguez. So, you know, that's when I realized that to take my talent very seriously. And at the same time, I had my commitment to the basketball team. So, you know, we had that, that, you know, that posse there too, you know, with all the people as far as like Louisville, you know, Rick Pitino, Kentucky. I mean, all the Syracuse, all the Big East schools coming down to our practices. And, um, you know, it was, it was fun. I mean, I was able to see that, you know, I was able to, he was able to share some of the experiences that he was going through with me. So when I was going through it, it was kind of like a cakewalk. And did he have that discussion with you? Hey, I don't know if I'm gonna go to NBA, I don't know if I'm gonna go to college. And also, you were being heavily recruited. What were some of the things that went on during recruiting? I mean, if you can discuss some I mean, of that. it was fun. I mean, Sebastian was always like a brother, you know? And, uh, you know, we joke around all the time. We talk about everything. I mean, we was a very tight close, I mean, team. We were very tight, and you know Sebastian would always talk about his goal was he wanted to play in the NBA, and he was going to do that by any means necessary. If it would have to go through college for ten years, he would do it. 
you know, but, you know, the main goal was uh, he wanted to play professional sports. It's something that he wanted to do for his family. You know, he wanted to also be able to provide for his family. So he was a very dedicated, disciplined child, you know, as a, you know, a high school individual. I mean, a kid like that at that age with all the, since seventh grade, with all- He was with, basically a basketball prodigy. Prodigy with all the fame and all the things, the different people coming at him, he was able to handle it well. Now things because of the family that and the core that was around him. Now your junior year, that's when you won your third title. Yeah, that's when I won my and third title. Did, did you guys start to say, hey, you know, we're going to win? Did you take it for granted? Also, at that time, the pressure was really on Sebastian yes. to be, to what, what, you know, what choice he was going to make. Another thing is, you were also looking at me getting a scholarship in basketball or football. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think at the time. And um, this is 04. This is 04. I mean, I think 04 was a very crucial year for us because. I mean, I think all the years that we spent when we were kids playing together paid off. All came together 04 because Sebastian was under extremely a lot of heat and a lot of pressure. And we as a team had to come together really because in the playoffs, if you look at the playoffs games, you didn't have great playoffs all the way till we got to the Garden. And that's because the team, we had a solid core team who was able to just stay with them and we was able to just push through. So things wasn't that bad on the shoulders. And I mean, we was all, we understood the magnitude of the pressure that we was under. What was a daily school day like for you guys also? Uh, I mean, just, just if you can remember some of the, remember. just a, a typical day for you. I mean, those, Because a typical day <laughs> for you may not be a typical day for the- uh, yeah, regular. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, it, was, it was great, man, because I mean, the, the school was very proud of us. You know, like the body, the school, the, the body was very proud of us. So in school, you know, we spent a lot of time in, on the, in the hallway, you know, talking to every, different people want to touch us, different people want to, talk to us, you know, because they, you know, like most of them, they go to school with us, so some of them don't even know who we are. Then when we started getting more, you know, more more publicity, you know, people started coming around us more. So, you know, we spent a lot of time in the lunchroom, you know, talking about different things and, you know, going to class, everybody knowing who you are. And how many letters were you getting a particular day? Did you get a letter every day? Oh man, I, letters a day? I, I, would get about, I would get about 20 letters a day from different schools. And I'll get about, me and Coach O'Connor will get a total of about 20 calls a day, per day, during the week. Your coach also, how does Coach Morton also handle this? You know, when we, we gotta, I gotta go, right? Okay. We're gonna have to take another break. But when we come back, I wanna talk to you also about going to the championship that particular year, your senior year, and yeah. also going to the University of Florida. Okay. And also the advice you would have for youngsters. No problem. We're gonna continue <laughs> more of our conversation with Nyan Boteng, from Abraham Lincoln High School, right after this. Wherever the bat cracks against the ball, gridiron greats collide. Wherever big time punches fly. Memories are made. What's your quick shot? So, there's a picture of you right there. Man, it's like bring a lot of memories. What was it like taking a picture that day? I mean, the, I mean, it was crazy when it came out. I didn't really know the impact till when the magazine started coming out. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that, was, that was really like the beginning of my career, you know? 30 best football players in New York. You yeah. were number one? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was the best. I mean, I'm the best ever to come out, I would say. Okay, all right. Well, hey, yeah, nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Sebastian, there goes your boy right there. Yeah, well, I look at some of these trophies. Even my plaque is here. Who's your plaque? Right here. All right, Abraham Lincoln High School. Oh, okay, <laughs> Sebastian Telfair. I mean, two of us. Two of a kind. That's incredible. Now, when you look, what else is it? Is it what about this over here? Any of the balls here belong to you? Or? I mean, yeah, I mean, like our championships is up here, basketball stuff. Championship? Like all these, yeah, like this, this um, staff, and we up there too, all of us up here. Okay. Boys basketball. See. Wow. Now, there was another. Who's that? Yeah, this is us right here. This is our first championship. That's your first championship? Yeah. Now, that was the old. I'm at 2002. 2002. I remember that one. Oh, man. <laughs> After a while, the garden was like uh, your second home, right? Yeah.
Thanks for just joining me. We're in the last part of our conversation with Nyan Botain. Nyan played high school football in Lincoln, also was part of that championship team with Sebastian Telfair, Antonio Pena, 04, 03, 02, and 05. They lost to Kennedy yes. his senior year. Now, in your junior year, that's when Sebastian was going pro. Explain that atmosphere. I know it was real chaotic for you also, but you guys handled it well. You won a championship. He had made his announcement. He was going into the NBA. Did he talk to you about that before he made that announcement? I mean, um, what do you call it? I mean, the year that year was chaotic. I mean, with all the pressure he was going through, with the decision, you know, whether he was going to go to high school, college. Um, you know, and that way the, that took a toll on him. And also his partner, his pal, also LeBron James, went pro the year before. The year before. So, I mean, LeBron was a like an example for him to see what it would be like. And they were very close, so they spoke closely about everything. And I, kind of, I think he knew, he had an idea what he was going to do. We personally, he didn't discuss with us that he was going to go pro, but he traveled. Uh, he traveled, like, during the year. And he went to Greece to work out with his brother, Jamel Thomas. And that's how we knew that. He probably gonna go to the NBA. Antonio Pena, he went to Villanova. He went to Billy, um, Villanova. I mean, Tone. I mean, we knew he was gonna get opportunity. You know, he's a great player, and uh, you know, he got his shot. Now, your senior year, now your junior year, also, were you winding down where you were going to go as far as football, basketball? Did you want to play football? Did you want to play basketball? Did you want to play both? Nah, I, want, I wanted to play both. That one I always knew. I wanted to play both. That's why I chose to go to University of Florida because. Billy Donovan, you know, who's from New York, who had a relationship with me, basketball guy, and Urban Meyer, football guy. I felt that both the school have the best of both worlds. And I mean, we won in both sports for two years in a row. Now, your senior year, you champ championship game again. You lost to Kennedy. Yes. But, and I remember Urban Meyer, he was always attending your games, yeah. also here at Lincoln High School. Yeah. You decided to go to University of Florida. You went to All-American Bowl. Right, yeah, your yes. high school All-American American, football. Yeah. Uh, that game was in Texas, I think. Texas, believe. yeah, San Antonio. Florida. Now, yeah. you had Penn State, you had Maryland, you had every school one I mean, of your services. Why Florida? Like I said, I had the opportunity to go to Penn State, you know, play under Coach um, Paterno, uh, Coach Ralph Regent in Maryland, uh, other schools as well. But the reason why I chose Florida because of the academics, you know, the, the weather. Well, academics real important to you because these days, you know, I mean, as far as high school sports, high school athletes, we don't hear about academics too much. I mean, like my background, I mean, I'm from I'm from Ghana. So right. my family's a strong, have a strong academic background, even though we are family, talented family of athletes. But everybody have to have that credential. And that was very important for me. So, you know, going out there, the academics, and also the weather, because I just came back from a major surgery the year before. And you didn't play that year. And I didn't play that year. year. I was blessed enough to even still have the opportunity. I remember when I was in the hospital, coaches was calling me, telling me that they still want me to be part of their team. You know, they don't care if I, I play or not. They still like me as an individual on their team. And I think, you know, I think it was the blessings of God upon my life that I still had the opportunity just to go to college. All right, University of Florida, you get down there, your first year, what was that like? Take us through your freshman year. And also, there were some personal issues, issues with some females yes. as far as with regard. As far as what I read, as far as what I heard. Okay. Explain what happened. My then. my freshman year was it was, it was I was hungry because I didn't play the previous season, so I was really hungry to play. So, you know, I went in there with a you know I was very focused. You know, I worked very hard. Um, I ended up playing. I played my way up to the depth chart. I, I was a backup to Chad Jackson at the time, who was a junior, who was going first round NFL. He's in the pros right now, right? Yeah, I was behind him. You know, I, I got some minutes. I got some catches. I got my feet wet a little bit. My sophomore year was the year that I was gonna have a breakout year. Um, I mean, I had so much expectation from the coaches, from my teammates, and as, a, as the fan base. And uh, we were working and uh, playing well. Then I, with all of that, it came attraction from the women as well. And um, being a young guy from the inner city, you know, going to that place and having all these different kind of women, dealing with all kind of different women coming at you, you know, I kind of took advantage of it. and. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the situation that happened, you know, I was visiting, like, my girlfriend. We had a little, you know, disagreement. She called the police. You know, the police came. I mean, it was a really, like, a misunderstanding. You know, just I was at the wrong place at the right, at the wrong time. Um, she called, you know, she, she was just being immature. She wanted to, you know, revenge on me. She knew that the media was going to get involved. So, you know, I didn't choose my friends wisely. And that's one thing I want to tell most of the young people out there who are coming up 
we're being recruited. Well, they're gonna say, no, that's not gonna happen to me, man. That happened to you. I mean, I said the same thing too, but if you don't take care and if you don't surround yourself with the right people, it will happen to you. And the, thing, the good thing is you have to make good decisions, the best decisions for yourself so you don't end up in a situation I was in. And unfortunately, I was still able to come out and finish my career and go on Why to the NFL. Uh, so, so you stayed there to your sophomore year, then you transferred to University of California, Berkeley? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Berkeley. The reason why I transferred because, you know, going into Florida, we had a lot of things that was promised, a lot of things that I was supposed to do, and I, a lot of things that I promised them, which I did, I did my part as far as the recruiting, recruitment part, bringing all the top players from the East Coast to down South. I did that. They didn't live up to their bargain. So uh, after we won the national championship in 2006, you know, I just, I called my friend in California, you know, Deshaun Jackson, and on uh, the Cal, they had a he's pro He's playing offense. with the Eagles now, He's right? with the Eagles now. Um, they had a pro offense, and that's what I wanted to play in. I didn't like the spread option so much, so, you know, I had the opportunity to go down there to play for Jeff Tefford, and it was a great experience, and after that, I got my shot with the Giants. Now, I got to bring this up again. You had another personal problem okay. in California. What occurred out there? Um, I, actually, I didn't have a, a, pro, a personal problem down there. It happened after I was in the pros. Okay. When I was came back in New York, uh, my ex girlfriend came to visit me. You know, she wanted to be with me. I said no. A lot of different things happened. Police so, got involved, and that you know basically it was just a bad judgment. So she wouldn't let up, unfortunately. Yeah. She let up now. She's gone. Yeah. Now right. I'm good. Right, cool. Now, real quick, you had also religion. Religion mm -hmm. plays a, a a real heavy part of your life. Yes. Explain that real quick. Right. Um, I discovered I have a calling on my life, you know, to preach the gospel. So, you know, I discovered that about myself. And uh, now, you know, I mean, that's made me humble. You know, I'm able to share my experiences with people and all different people in the world. And, you know, that's the, that's what I'm living in. OK, your pro shot. How does that look for you going forward? I mean, right my now? future look bright. Okay. You know, my future look bright. I just got to keep working. And uh, this year I'm looking forward to doing big things. I know you will. Thanks, Thanks Nyan. We're out of time. Me. I know he was wrapping me up over there. All right, folks, we are out of time here at Abraham Lincoln High School. It was my pleasure to talk to Nyan Botang, future pro, future All-American. He's everything right now. <laughs> right, go. We're out of time. Later. <laughs> yeah, thanks. There's your name. Because when I, first, I remember when I first came to this school, mm -hmm. I used to look at this, the names, and I, I saw Steph. This is my brother right here, Dominic. Is this the guy. athletic honor roll? Or? Yeah, this, this no, this, yeah, this the people, roll. the athletes that I went through here. Okay. You know, like who, who went on to college and did something, you know? Right. Um, yeah. In the Zone has been made possible with the generous underwriting support from the Brooklyn Cyclones. Tickets are on sale now. For information, 718 449 8497 or on the web at www.brooklyncyclones.com. The Cyclones are Brooklyn. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.